Disclaimer. The insights and opinions shared on this show are for educational and entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, we recommend consulting with a qualified professional to better understand your unique financial situation. Welcome to the Investor's Playbook Show, where our mission is clear, empowerment through financial education. We firmly believe that financial freedom isn't a privilege. It's a right that's available to everybody. Each week, we dive deep into the world of finances, breaking down complex topics and making them accessible and actionable for everyone. As we grow this community, we invite you to join us on this journey. Why tune in? Because together, we're not just learning about wealth, we're building a movement, reshaping futures, and proving that with the right knowledge, financial success is within everyone's reach. It's time to get off the sidelines. Let's go. Welcome to Investor's Playbook, episode 26. I'm Cornell Rowan. And I'm Deshaun Edwards. And today we have a special guest, my dog, Eric, coming to talk to us about futures, about trading um, other types of investments. So we are interested to hear kind of his background. We got some questions that we're going to ask him. Um, but yeah, this episode is going to be a deep dive into something that me nor Cornell really tapped into yet. You know what I mean? We got a, a expert on the call. So definitely interested uh, to hear more about Eric's journey when it comes to trading futures. Uh, but yeah, man. So Eric, you want to come and you know, you, you want to holler at the people real quick. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer, uh, just like Deshaun, you know, me and Deshaun met through, uh, Nesby, uh, a while back. We got hired initially, um, by the same company starting off our, uh, engineering, uh, journey. Um, I'm originally from Alabama. Um, I really got introduced to, uh, to trading overall. Um, when I moved to, to Florida, uh, out here in Orlando in, um, 2018 at the time, um, I was more so focused on the Forex market. Um, and that name kind of, kind of spins, uh, it kind of spins around people's head a little bit, I would say, just because of some of the negative thoughts through certain companies that was, you know, teaching people, um, claim that they were teaching people, um, about Ooh. trading, but in, in fact, they were doing other, uh, things such as trying to recruit people for money and things like that. So, um, you know, I still was interested in it because I saw the possibility. Um, the possibilities. I knew that this was something that, um, you know, big banks, um, as I got a chance to meet some people um, in Charles Schwab, some people that worked on Wall Street, I knew that it was something real. So it, it still sparked an interest. Um, I really spent a lot of time, um, a lot of money um, on courses at first, like forex courses. I was going to conferences, uh, you know, buying books, um, buying online mentorship to really get a grasp of things. Um, and as I continued to uh, to learn more about Forex, I started to realize that um, one of the major things for me was that uh, Forex uh, isn't regulated for the most part, except for a few brokers. Um, and now, like, we're in a situation now where the uh, SEC and a lot of the regulators in the United States are now cracking down on a lot of brokers. And they've been taking uh, some of these brokers off the main platform because they aren't regulated. Um, and what I kind of mean by that is, uh, for example, um, me and you can be looking at the same currency pair, but we have two different brokers. We both press buy at the same time, but we're getting filled in at different prices because of spreads, because of whatever, uh, that, however that broker operates. Um, and when I start to see that, I start to realize certain things was happening was like, I was getting stopped out when I actually had my uh, stop position way lower than expected. Um, and it, it made me realize like, man, like I need to get in something that's more uh, regulated. And that's kind of like what kind of trend made me transition um, over into looking into futures because the difference is we're, we're getting in at the same exact price. We're seeing the same exact thing that the banks, um, that the hedge funds and all the big time players are also being able to see. So I think it's, uh, I think it's more of a fair game if you ask me versus, uh, tr you know, trading Forex where brokers can manipulate the price. You know, they can do different things and it's because they're not, they, they most of them wasn't regulated. So there's like two or three, I think, um, actual regulated Forex brokers 
but most people don't want to go the regulated way because um it doesn't they don't provide hardly any leverage so the leverage is very very small so these unregulated these unregulated brokers are can provide crazy leverage like one to five hundred but on a regulated broker it's almost like you have no leverage what you're trading is literally like your own money versus being able to use that leverage and that margin to borrow additional like kind of additional money from that broker i yeah, I, I know y'all kind of understand how I was how, about like, to say so when you mentioned yeah. leverage, you're talking like how people would get margin accounts when they're trading in the stock market, trading money Correct. that they basically borrow from the broker. Um, and Correct. in your case, well, in the Forex world, it's called leverage. Basically, they, they're letting you borrow some money so that you can trade. And then. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so that and then I guess it, that can, that's where you kind of get into the dangerous game, because if you lose their money. Yeah. Then, <laughs> and I just want to empathize with you on with you on that forex man. I'm not gonna lie, it seemed really scammy and Ponzi scammy. So it was kind of hard to know like who was actually you know doing it for the forex trading and who were trying to get people under you in order to make a profit. And mm -hmm. you got to pay this monthly fee, and and they're like, oh, you're gonna make this monthly fee back anyway. So yeah, it, it got really crazy, man. You you'd have the most. <laughs> the pe the people that don't look like they're making uh any type of income come up to you and be like yeah forex changed my life I'm making I'm making uh tens of thousands of dollars every month and it's like bro like where where is it going so you really got to be careful um when it comes to those unregulated things I think that's uh kind of how crypto had a bad uh rap so our first question right just off the bat what exactly yeah. is trading futures and how is it different than you know trading stocks got you okay so it's kind of like what we what we talked about before actually recording it so what futures actually is is a, a financial contract that obligates parties to buy or sell a particular asset at a pre-determined price um how it how it actually differs for stocks um, a lot of businesses and um, companies actually use this as a way of uh, hedging and protecting their assets. And I kind of want to give an example for uh, for you real quick. Let's say like we are, uh, you know, we own a, jur a jewelry company, right? And obviously we know that gold is a, a safe haven. And, you know, we, we're, we're at a point where um, we are wanting to buy gold at a future price let's say we want to buy gold um three months from now we know that we're going to need a certain amount of gold but we know like hey there's might be um some things going on with war or something that might cause gold to fluctuate higher which means that we'll be buying gold at a um higher price um we, what we're able to do is we're able to buy a future contract at a predetermined price right and let's say if the price goes up from let's say I don't know eighteen hundred an ounce to twenty five hundred an ounce, we officially locked in that eighteen hundred dollar an ounce price. So it's a way that a lot of companies and um, different businesses, you know, met, uh, mitigate their risk when it comes to uh, being able to purchase things um, overly expensive, um, or if they're trying to sell, being able to sell their goods or sell their assets at a predetermined price if they feel like things were going down so it uh, it officially locks that in for the duration of that um of that contract so that's actually what it what it was really designed for you get what i'm saying and the cool thing about it is uh most most of these companies and most traders as well they normally liquidate their trades as soon as they get a profit they don't normally hold the the position you know as long as the the contract um expiration is in and um with these different assets it can be gold wheat corn you got milk different assets different contracts you can buy and lock in um you can actually get the physical commodity um or asset um after the contract ended so with the gold example you would uh you would actually be getting gold sent you know, from the broker, obviously the broker will work things out, but the physical asset could get delivered 
as well. But most people just tend to close out and just keep the difference in their accounts. But but yeah, go ahead. I have a, like question, a question, man. So first off, this sounds a lot like options. It, it kind of is. That is that basically what it is? But with it, commodities? It, it is, but it is, but it's not. And the reason why I say that is because uh, option has uh, Greeks, um, things such as theta, um, and option. I mean, uh, futures don't have that. They don't have Greeks and different things. But it kind of is. Uh, it kind of is very similar. Mm. Got you. And sending the commodity to you is wild because, like you, you said things like milk, bro. You send me a thousand dollars worth of milk trade. to my house. <laughs> You can try it's, it's interesting. This, 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 sound, this, like, <laughs> sound like power. These, these, these like are some of the things people, <laughs> these are some of the things I know because right now a lot of Forex people are jumping over the future because of some of the same reasons that I talked about earlier. They're not, they don't know that. They don't know that. All they know is I bought this contract at this price. I'm up this amount of money. Let me close. But they don't even know that, like, that asset after that contract ends can actually get delivered to you. Like a lot of people didn't a lot because I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I didn't know that I had to really talk to people who were um, who've been trading futures for a very long time. And that that is what these major, you know, companies or companies, organizations, farmers. You can you can see like how a farmer would be concerned about wheat prices and how he could use those contracts to lock in those certain wheat prices if he's concerned about the fluctuation of the prices. So whatever he locks in when that contract is over, that's what he's going to get. But if he knows it's going to go up, he's basically getting a deal by locking it in at this price. And if it goes up two, three dollars, he just saved himself, you know, some money. Now, now, obviously, it can get to a point where, you know, it is lower than the amount that uh, he locked that contract in for. But at the same time, it's like, you know, he's you're locking in a specific price to try to make sure you're you're protected. Right. So that's that's really the main reason why futures even got, I guess, became a thing. But obviously, people don't trade for the actual physical um, asset that you can get from it um, after it's over, because obviously, if you're going to have gold, for example, you're going to need a place to store it. You're going to need a place to make sure everything's safe. So most people would just get would just keep the profits or close the close the position early. Like me, me personally. I'm trading. I never even thought about um, I never thought about holding the contract to everything was over and getting everything delivered. And the reason why is because who knows if you're up five hundred, six hundred dollars on your on your portfolio and then it comes all the way back down. And let's say I held throughout the whole contract and I ended up closing like maybe ten dollars over the original entry price. But I was up five hundred. I think I was, most people would rather take that five hundred dollars, and instead of taking taking a physical asset that's now worth more ten dollars than what they paid for when the contract is over, if that makes sense. And I and I wonder who like who's storing this stuff like and who's selling this on the market. You get what I'm saying? Like if I'm buying milk, where is that coming from? Right. Who who delivers yeah. it to my house? Dude. <laughs> that 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 process i don't know i just know that the broker is kind of like overworking working that process out um That's as wild. far as who who they who who are they getting the actual assets from i just know that that's kind of like handled um more so on the on the on the broker side got you a lot of people don't know that all people know is that hey you know forex is <laughs> is is, is Get, they're they're cracking down. They're cracking down on people on forex, and and now people are making that transition over, um, to futures. But they don't. Those are things that they don't know. You know, so 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 you you answered our next question. I was gonna ask you like what the the main advantages were, and I I do understand you you described it as something uh comparable to options, right? So. Is there a reason why you're trading futures instead of options? Even though they're, um, they're, they're um, yeah, similar. because the reason why I'm trading futures because instead mm -hmm. of options is because um although like we talked about uh earlier, you know how um you can get the physical asset and some of those things, 
uh, a lot of the charts as far as what you see from Forex to futures is looks exactly the same. Like I said, the difference is the Forex brokers can manipulate the prices. But as far as the actual chart with the candlesticks, they look exactly the same. So me transitioning from one uh, market to another where the candlesticks and the the patterns and everything that you would see on the charts are exactly the same. You're just in a different market. It makes it made it much easier. So I'm able to trade um, NASDAQ, you know, S&P 500. Um, what we talked about earlier was more so on the commodity side, but you can also trade the indexes as well. You can trade treasury notes. Um, and so it, it, it is already like accustomed to what I'm used to seeing on the forex side. So that's kind of like why I made that that um that transition over to futures because the charts and stuff are very similar and the strategies that, work work as well the same that makes sense so you already have the knowledge and the background the experience so you felt like you could do well in futures um because you've are no nah, that's that's dope i i can understand that and yeah i was gonna ask you too so and and so you just mentioned something that i was gonna ask right like are you able to trade things that are not like milk and wool and gold? But you just mentioned you can trade indexes, like you can trade futures with indexes or you can trade indexes by trading futures. But my question is like how, and this goes into like what a typical future trade look, looks like, but how do you even trade futures? Is it done on like the Fidelity app? Is it done? What? That's, what a, that's a good question. Um, there's, there's if there's different um, platforms that you can um, that you can trade on. Uh, you have uh, the one of the most popular ones. I know y'all heard of this one is uh, Thinkorswim by TD. Um, you can trade on that. There's uh, there's all types of different things. I think I even think uh, Webull is now allowing um, future contracts trading as well. But uh, as far as the most popular platforms, I would say uh, Tradevate um ninja trader is a platform you can trade futures on and then obviously uh td td think or swim well actually it's charles swap now since charles swap acquired them but it's still still called think or swim so those are like the major platforms where you would load up an account of how much you want to um you want to trade um on on the futures market mm, nice that's what's up man and so with futures you can't use like you mentioned earlier leverage right you have to use however much money you have in the account no more well, well, no, like that well no well like what, what i was saying earlier was um on the forex side the regulated brokers didn't give you much uh they didn't give you uh hardly any margin right they didn't give you hardly any margin margin and the leverage that you were able to take trades was very small so for example how a lot of people used to blow their forex account they used to have like a uh, hundred dollars. They'll put a, like they. There used to be this thing where people would say they're flipping accounts, like they're taking a hundred dollars to a thousand dollars in a day, which is possible but very unrealistic. But the reason why they're able to do that is because the unregulated brokers allowed you to borrow a good amount of money um, from them versus trading exactly your own money. Because what would happen is if I, if my leverage was so small that I'm really trading my own money, the the position size that I'm putting on that hundred dollar account, it the platform wouldn't even allow me to enter that trade. Period. It would say you don't even have enough margin to even get into this position, right? Mm. But but it's kind of crazy how 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 when I, when you really think about it, these unregulated brokers allow you to put a crazy lot size. Now I'm speaking on the forex side. Because they're giving you this leverage, but if it moves literally the wrong direction, just a little bit, your account is gone. You know, if you're not using the correct risk management versus if you're you're having your own, you're basically trading against your own money and not really borrowing anything. The platform won't even allow you to use that same position size. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, with futures, you know, you're able to um, you're able to get. Um, some decent, some decent leverage and some decent margin as well, um, and it allows people to really um, maximize on their on their profit returns if they actually if they're actually if they actually know how to trade. So, okay. so you do get margin with future trading with futures trading. Yeah. You, you're yeah. allowed a certain amount of money to use that isn't yours, right? Yeah, got you. 
Okay. Yeah, and I, yeah. I really think it. I really think it depends on um, the broker as well and what they offer. Um, that's mm-hmm. kind of just like how it was with uh, forex. You know, different brokers offer different, um, different leverage, different margin. Um, but I think it's the same way with uh, choosing a broker with uh, with futures as well. Is um, I I want to say for futures, there's a certain amount that you uh that you you have to have in the account though before you can actually take advantage of really you know using that so um i want to say it's like twenty thousand i think um i don't want to i don't want to throw numbers at that but i think it's like around that number there's a certain amount that you got to have in there mm-hmm. in the account gotcha. gotcha so so you, you seem real knowledgeable about uh future so i i kind of want to ask you know like with stocks you know there's certain strategies to to buying stocks. Uh, some people might dollar cost average. Uh, some people might uh, do fundamental analysis. So I just kind of want to mm-hmm. ask your uh, your trading st- strategy when it comes to, to futures. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, because futures is re- regulated, um, one thing about the futures market is that every single contract that is bought or sold is going through the same exchange and they have uh certain tools and um things you can use to to actually see that so when you're in the when you're actually trading when the market is open you can actually see how many buyers and sellers at each of these prices so with that information you can see if somebody is aggressively selling at a particular price or aggressively buying at a particular price because keep in mind every time a person is buying or selling a contract is going through an exchange and is being literally displayed right in front of you so where you can visually see all the transactions that are going on in real time so there's um there's something called a footprint chart and that it 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 does that exact thing it literally tells you in each candlestick how many buyers and sellers were engaged at that particular price so what I would normally do is obviously I would look and see if there's news, um, if there's news, any fundamental catalyst that will affect what I'm trading. Um, if I see that it's like a normal day, then I'll go to the markets and then I would obviously mark up t- simple technical analysis, you know, support, resistance, supply, demand. Um, and what you will notice is you will notice like where if you look directly to the left, you might see like a big buyer stepped in and it might say you might see on a on a display panel that at this particular price four days ago for example there were 15,000 buyers that bought at this particular price and now price is back at that area again so the number one thing i would be looking to see is is are buyers willing to hold this price and buy back up and will I, will I be able to actually, and I can actually see the, the buying activity happening in real time, or will sellers eventually break this level? And you can see that as well about by how many people are aggressively selling. So I like how futures is 100% transparent. And like that's one thing that I like. I like that I can see everything. I can see who's buying and who's selling in real time. So I use that to my advantage. If I know that people are aggressively buying And it's now I want to kind of talk about a few things. So like if there are people that are aggressively buying, it should be represented in volume of the candlesticks. Like you should see volume going in your direction. But there are also times where you're aggressively buying, but the candlesticks aren't going anywhere. Like there's all this buying going on at a particular price, but you're not seeing no follow through. And what that's telling me is there's people that are passively also selling as well. And so you might want to get ready to see if sellers are going to take over. And that's normally what happens. So that's the kind of like, go ahead. Isn't that like with uh, consolidating with, um, you know, like if you were to look at stock candlesticks, I think it sounds Uh, very similar, bro. Like it it sounds a lot like technical analysis. Go ahead. My bad, Eric. No, it is. It is in a sense, but it's kind of just like, like imagine, Imagine if like you're looking at a particular asset and it's literally hitting it's literally hitting its price and it's not it can't break past it. You see that it's literally hitting the same exact price and it's hitting it is it can't get past it. But I'm looking at the st- the panel and the panel is telling me like, yo, you got ten thousand, twenty, thirty thousand people buying, let's say for example, gold 
but the, the but gold is not the price ain't moving anywhere well then i know that there's some seller up there that's absorbing all of those buyers and markets probably going to get ready to fall and that's normally um what happens but as far as like consolidation um markets do consolidate in the futures market is very similar to the stock market as well um but i like the fact that i can actually see um statistically because <laughs> like i said i'm a like as engineers we're very mathematical we're very statistical about things so me actually seeing that hey there were 30,000 people that was trying to buy here and the markets did not move that screams a red flag if I'm if I'm trying to buy you get what I'm saying like why isn't the market moving when I when I literally see these many people are buying um this particular asset so it's it's that transparency I think that kind of gives um it gives the average individual I think a chance um to be able to uh see everything that the banks and the hedge funds and everyone else see so nice so i have a quick question too yeah. it sounds like you have to be very active to trade futures you have to pay attention to how many people are buying shares when they're buying them you have to pay attention to the volume um so it's not something that's like a purchase walk away you got to pretty much be looking at the trade as you execute know your exit strategy things like that is that it's similar to trading, it, it, right? It, 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 it depends. Like I said, if you're for a typical day trader, yes. Mm -hmm. But for a person like how I explained earlier, if you're mm -hmm. an owner of a business and you're trying to lock in specific prices, they're not, they're not, they don't care about, you know, uh, actively looking. They just know, hey, I bought this contract. It ends in three months. Um, I want to use this just in case gold shoots up an additional $300. I see that, 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 you know, there's a war going on and I know that's going to affect gold because gold is a safe haven. So I don't care um, where the market is. I want to write this contract out so I can lock this in at my particular mm -hmm. price for my business. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so it depends, right? Right. For, for a trader. Yes. For an intraday trader, they're normally in and out and they're liquidating these contracts as soon as they have a position, but a person more so like a farmer, a person like a, a jewelry store owner who's who needs gold in the future, they're they're looking at it from a different perspective as the versus the typical intraday or day trader. Gotcha. All right, makes sense. So, um, so with this, what are some mistakes that that you've made when it comes to futures? Just so, like you know, somebody listening to this can avoid uh, making those same mistakes. Uh, I would say, um, for me, uh, there, there's interest there. So th this is what's really interesting. You have two, um, different types of asset classes within those classes that you can trade. And this, this normally, this normally for commodities and, um, indexes. So you have what's called minis, which are like the larger size contracts. And you have what's called micro futures, which is a 10th of that. So, for example, um, for example, the S and P five hundred it moves um, fifty dollars a point. So every time it moves up or down of one point, it's fifty dollars. But if I, that's for a mini contract, but if I traded a micro contract, that would be a tenth of that. That would be five dollars. Mm -hmm. So me personally, I started off with the mini contract, which is the larger contract, and my uh, my mental. My mental was kind of getting messed with because I wasn't used to the P and L fluctuations that came with that, right? So like I literally would see like Nas with Nas, for example, um, Nasdaq. Nasdaq is also another uh volatile Nasdaq, and it's very similar to QQQ as well. Um, they move very similar, but Nasdaq fluctuations was playing with my mental, but instead I started using. The, the smaller versions, which is a tenth of the the regular size contract, so it would literally take me ten micros to get one mini. And so I started off trading minis, and I wasn't I wasn't uh, psychologically ready um, for the for the type of drawdown that I would have to encounter with trading those. So I would say that was the that was the biggest biggest mistake was mm. trying to go with the larger size contracts versus something that we can trade that is the same exact thing, but you can buy it. It's like almost like a fractional, a fractional share in a sense, almost you can buy it for 
a fraction of that um of that of that original price so um uh, yeah that's fraction. that's kind of like that's, that's kind of like what i would say my main mistake was got you okay so then the recommendation you're saying is to start with the smaller contracts the micro contracts first get your feet wet right before doing the mini contracts and then oh, those are those the only two types of contracts is it just micro and mini and then i guess just yeah, regular yeah okay. that, that's it you have micros and you have minis and they're not for uh every single asset they normally apply to uh a lot of the commodities so you can trade micros on gold silver platinum um but like as far as like milk um there's natural gas you can trade the treasury notes i don't think they have micros but i know for a fact you know s p 500 nasdaq the dow jones they also have micro contracts so mm. it's like for example you're trading you know um five dollars a point versus 50 cents a point you know what i'm saying the psychology would be so much better knowing that like okay i'm not over here shaking because i literally just right. saw my position <laughs> go from you know 150 back to negative 150 in just a small fluctuation you know dang okay yeah all right so that's good that's good so that's some good advice for someone who is trying to get into futures go with the micro contracts not the minis to start with um mm -hmm. and then i also just want to say on top of that would you recommend a certain form of future trading because i know you mentioned that there's commodities there's indexes that you can trade what do you typically trade when you're doing futures? Have you done commodity trading or has it mainly just kind of been with the indexes? Oh, you done commodity? Okay. Yeah. So walk yeah, us through I, that um, I, I normally try to, I normally say like pick one asset. Uh, if you're starting off, pick one to two assets and just focus strictly on those um, because you will understand the, the fundamental drivers behind those. You will understand uh, how it moves, when it moves, um, and you will, it'll give you a more, uh a more foundation than trying to bounce around from asset to asset um me personally i pick uh i pick i fight to trade crude oil um i trade crude oil i trade gold and then i trade normally uh us 30. um those the dow jones i normally okay. trade those three um and i try to focus on those three because they give you a lot of movement um a lot of movement um, each and every day. So it gives you the opportunity to make some decent profits, um, every single day. So those are kind of like the main three, um, that I, that I personally focus on and it's been good so far, man. It's crazy because like I said, we, we talked about Nvidia, um, um, the, we talked about Nvidia yesterday and the markets, NASDAQ, all those, uh, those indexes made pretty much higher highs, right? And knowing that information and knowing that you can get in with earnings, it's kind of, it applies, it, same kind of knowledge kind of can apply um, with trading futures as well. And and um, I know some people who probably made some pretty decent money um, on yeah. the future side too. Nice, nice. Yeah. So um, I was going to, well, I think Cornell, did you have a question? Uh, no, I don't have any question. I think oh, okay, I'm... cool. So I was going to ask you, how do you when you're when you're trading futures and you could let me know if there's like a correlation do you see a connection from trading futures to the regular stock market like does the the indexes that you trade with futures do they move like how the regular s p 500 or the dow jones moves how does that even work because futures you're talking about future trading literally and mm -hmm. if someone's trading the dow jones in real time how how does a future trade affect the Dow Jones's actual price? You, you know what I mean? I get I get what you're saying. So yeah. so um so the thing about it is the uh as far as your strategy, uh, a good strategy first of all can probably work most at most cases can work in any market. Um when when we talk about like some of the indexes like US 30, um Nasdaq, S&P 500 um for example like i said earlier qqq mm -hmm. and spy um er, they move in correlation with one another i know a lot of stock folks more so like to trade uh qqq and spy normally when qqq uh makes a run nasdaq does the same thing 
Um, same with SPY. When SPY starts to make a run, the S&P 500, it does the, um, the same exact thing. Um, now, when, it, we, when we were talking about, to answer the second part of your question, when we were talking about um, how does it work when we're really looking at uh, the futures at a predetermined price and locking in those prices, even from a trading perspective, um, as a trader, the trader doesn't, most traders don't care about holding that future as long as the contract is, uh, is out. So if I know I have a contract, you know, that it te technically expires three months from now, and I see that the market just printed me a thousand dollars, right? I'm going to close that thousand dollars before that contract ends. So, mm -hmm. I, so most day traders are not going to care about the the uh the the future of that price because the contract ends in three months so i can literally day trade the same exact contract over and over and over again i can come in on monday uh let's say the contract ends three months from now i buy i close out in profit and then when i go back to try to buy again the next day it's the, still the same contract you see what i'm saying it's still the same contract all i care about is me getting a little bit of that fluctuation so I can close. <laughs> but like I said, if I'm on, if I'm owning a business, I care about where that thing closes in three months from now. Like, and like I said, this is the beauty I think about doing research and doing fundamental analysis. Um, Cause I thought about it like from a business perspective, I'm like, man, I know if you need inventory for something and that asset relates to that, being able to lock in an actual price and you can do your research and say, Hey, well, for example, Ukraine and Russia war is going on, you know, or, uh, yeah, Ukraine and Russian war, obviously, mm -hmm. obviously, um, that affected the markets. Um, and normally in a time of turmoil, people start turning to gold. And, um, if I'm a jewel, if I'm a person who owns that jewelry store, for example, and I see all this going on, I'm probably buying a lot of future contracts. Because I'm like, hey, I need to buy three months future contract so I can be able to get it at these prices versus trying to get it three months later. And now, because of the war or whatever fundamentals, now I got to get it at a market way high value way higher than I, the price that I could originally lock in. So, like I said, I think it's uh, I think it that that like I said, it determines on uh, the market participant. If it's a, just an intraday uh, trader. They ain't gonna care. They ain't gonna care to hold that contract out unless they're a long term trader. Obviously, they if you can swing, you can swing futures if you want to. But man, like like when I tell you the uh, P and L and the psychological barrier between seeing like, dang, I was up three thousand dollars and now it pulled all the way back and now I'm back to five dollars or fifteen dollars. Like a person is most people are going to liquidate that contract as soon as they get a profit. So yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. No, nah, that makes sense. That yeah. makes a lot of sense, man. <clears throat> and I think it's a lot similar to what we what you do when you're trading options, right? Mm -hmm. You purchase a contract, it expires at a certain date, but your your contract or the, the contract you purchase could definitely pay you well before your contract expires. And you mm -hmm. can sell that contract, you know, get out before. Go ahead, Cornell. Nah, uh, I I really appreciate you uh, breaking that down. It was very digestible, to be honest, man, because I feel like you really gave me an understanding of why people are using future, what is what is um, being used for, because I, I literally had no idea before this conversation. And for you to uh, break it down in that manner, man, I, I really appreciate that, to be hey, man. honest. Hey, hey, yeah. No, man, no problem, man. I'm... I've never, I never actually sent like held out on the future contract and requested to get uh, the actual physical <laughs> goal yet. But I might have to try it one day and see. Bro, you gotta, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, I have to, I have to put in a light position though. Know? It'll have to be something small. But I'm like, yeah. man, I wonder if they actually gonna send, send, send everything. And once they officially be like, hey, you know, put in your information. We want, we gotta send you over everything. I'm like, yo, this is this is crazy. I got a, I got some gold in the house, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty wild. And I know yeah. that you said that you that you uh, created some content. Like, where the where can the people uh, find that content? Um, I haven't actually released it yet. Um, okay. I was I was I've been working on a futures course. 
um haven't really released it yet because i've kind of just been focusing on um you know making sure i'm good first before you really start expanding out and helping other people i i do believe you got to help yourself first because it, it it becomes a lot when you're really trying to um help a lot of people you know i had i've had a good amount of people that have um wanted to know more about futures they are some people that know how to trade they want to know um a little bit about you know the tools that you can use in futures um and so you know i put together some content i still got a lot of stuff that i want to talk about um i don't just want to put out something and i feel like there's a lot of stuff that's gotten left out um, I think a lot of courses that I've uh, came across, they don't even talk about taxes. You know, they don't even t they don't talk about how to do taxes um, when you're when you're investing or when you're trading. They don't even talk about things like how to put things in an LLC and how to make, you know, your trading an actual business, because that's what it you know, at the end of the day, that's what it is. So that is the type of information um, I want to make sure I be able to give the people. I want to be able to give people more than just, hey, this is how you buy or sell. But this is how you actually, you know, you treat it, you treat it like a real business. Yeah. And it's how you become successful in that. Now, so I, I understand that, you know, you haven't released that yet. And you know that I, I can't wait to see when you do release it. You know, I'll, I'll be looking for that, that info. But how, how can people find you? You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, they uh, obviously um, I have two. Uh, I have two Instagrams. Um, I have uh, Beat the Rat Race Trading. Um, that is my trading page. Um, and then obviously my personal page is cream of the crop. So, um, those people can reach me with, with either those two uh, pages. If they have any questions. Um, I, I'll normally get everyone in a reasonable manner. Um, and you know, and I, and I say this is because these are skill sets. I think this is so important. I'm glad y'all actually even started a business like this. I think it's important because now we, um, we're starting to see, a lot of companies are letting have been letting people go. Um, you know, I've, you know, I'm 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 big on LinkedIn, and the number one thing, the first thing I see on LinkedIn is, you know, a person at this company got laid off, a person at that company laid got laid off, a person at this company got laid off. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think you know certain skill sets and certain things, certain knowledge is out there that uh, that a company can no no company can take away from us. Um, these are the, the things that you guys are putting out here are things that nobody will be able to take from them. Right. And I think that that's that's important. You know, um, you know, the information is out there, but it's going to be up to the people themselves to be able to, you know, take it and run with it. You know what I'm saying? It's so like it's, it's, it's like, yeah, this could be going on. But at the same time, you could be investing, you know, like and and, and I wish I kind of knew the things that I knew now, because. You know, certain companies, um, when I first when I first moved to Florida, for example, um, certain companies like Northrop, man, I didn't realize how important Northrop stock was. And ever since, like, you know, the war stuff go uh, been going right. on, Northrop stock has been, been doing exceptionally well, uh, as well as Lockheed. So it's like it's little things like that, that you can also be able to not only take and invest for yourself, but you can also be able to evaluate the current company you're in, the current sector you're in. And that can determine, hey, do I really want to go all in, you know, on, you know, on my um, benefits as far as, you know, matching and how much I want to contribute. So these are I think these are transferable skills inside the work, like, workplace and outside the workplace. Right. And the thing is, no matter what occupation you have, these are skills that you can do. You see what I'm saying? You can be getting uh, that outside income if you're a teacher, an engineer, a doctor, a nurse. A, a janitor, it doesn't matter. You see what I'm saying? You can do this. So, yeah, uh, no, nah, I really respect that um, that point of view, man. And I appreciate you ju just saying that, and you know, also realizing like how important it is. So, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, Eric. We 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 appreciate you coming on the show, man. And even just the words that you just said, like that's literally why me and Cornell do what we do, right? We want to teach people these financial tactics we want to increase people's financial education their wealth of knowledge when it comes to their own finances everybody has their own race that they're running but these are skills that you can just apply to your own race right whether it be you saving to buy a house whether it be you trying to get out of debt trying to create a budget like like cornell said this is gonna apply to you it is money does not discriminate you know what i mean everybody has to have it everybody has to deal with it you can't avoid it 
right? It's one of those things that you need to, in order to continue to survive. So definitely um, appreciate you sharing that knowledge and those tactics uh, as another way to make your money work for you. You know what I mean? Because people aren't even doing the bare minimum, right? Like putting money into a high yield savings account. But when you're talking about investing, yeah, it's a lot of ways to slice it. And yeah, we, I mean, we heard it today, man. Future trading is definitely a thing. It's, it is, it's a way that people are making money and we just appreciate you being able to explain that, you know what I'm saying, to our community. Um, and definitely, as soon as you have the course running up, let us know. We're going to make sure that we plug you, make sure that we push people your way. And, you know, when this episode drops, we're going to make sure that we tag you, of course, because we want people to learn more about investing in all forms. You know what I mean? So 100%. Yeah, man. For sure. really I appreciate, appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all having me on, man. It's been a pleasure. Definitely. Definitely. For sure, definitely. man. All right. Well, Ready? another one in the books. Episode yes, 26. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, man. Appreciate y'all as always. Thank y'all for tuning in. We love y'all. Um, yeah. See y'all next week. All right. Take care, y'all. All right, Eric. Appreciate you, man. All right. Yes, sir.